Tonight, meet Mario Van Peebles and groove to the music of the Beach Boys on The Late Show with David Letterman. Now, your local news. Next on Channel 3 Eyewitness News, some Connecticut viewers are outraged over a cable TV show that showed too much flesh and too little clothing. A seating chart and a passenger manifest are being closely studied for clues to what caused the TWA crash. And Girl Scouts are now being charged money to sing their campfire songs. Now, Eyewitness News Nightly. WFSB, this is Eyewitness News Nightbeat. Good evening. An 86-year-old Middletown woman is the victim of homicide, and police suspect tonight that her daughter did it. The victim was found strangled in her bedroom. She's identified as 66-year-old Marie St or Anna Stella, her 86-year-old uh, Anna Stella. Her daughter, 66-year-old Marie Stella, has been taken for psychiatric evaluation in connection with her mother's death. They apparently shared the house together. Police found the body this afternoon after responding to a 911 call. Our Tracy Martinez is at the scene, and we're going to get a report from her in just a few minutes minutes. Along the shoreline, some TV viewers are outraged by a risque show that recently featured a half-naked game of Twister. It appeared on a cable access show and the nudity also shocked the local cable company. Channel 3's Kathy Moss has the story. The six-year-old cable show carried by Cablevision is hosted by 25-year-old Jerry Jer McClelland. It's on weekly between 9 and 10 p.m. and has a disclaimer right off the bat but features nudity, profanity, sex acts, and other obscenities. Material we couldn't show you. Bridgeport Mayor Joe Gannam is behind the effort to pull the show's plug. The language is one thing, but then to see actual sexual acts being uh, on the television screen, uh, on regular TV, and you think that, uh, especially in the summertime, you've got children watching. But now McClellan says he's talking to his lawyer to explore his legal rights about staying on cable. The Supreme Court uh, ruled in shows like mine in our favor, and uh, basically I did nothing wrong. Uh, I know the show was a little wild, but according to public access rules, which there aren't any, I, I did nothing wrong. I played by the book. In a recent U.S. Supreme Court ruling, cable operators like Cablevision may ban indecent programming, but not on public access channels used by community groups. Ironically, to get this program, you have to subscribe to Cablevision's least expensive basic cable service called Family Cable, and the program then airs unscrambled. Just flipping through with the remote, you know, and you, every, his show always comes on, and you, you, it's almost like, I mean, you hate the show, but you're fascinated. You just watch it because you're filled with disgust. Hey, that's why I make a remote control, to change the channel if you don't like what you see. Meanwhile, this from Cablevision. In the interest of our customers and employees, many of whom have expressed concern over public access programming, Cablevision has removed the Jerry Jer show effective immediately. Mayor Ganim sees this as a victory. In Bridgeport, I'm Kathy Moss, Channel 3 Eyewitness News, Nightbeat. A Trumbull school bus driver who calls herself a witch could be sent to prison for a long time after a jury found her guilty today of having sex with a 14-year-old boy. Prosecutors say 28-year-old Carrie Padovino seduced the middle school student and made him lick her blood. After the verdict was read, chaos erupted outside the courthouse, and police say one of Padovino's friends beat up a newspaper photographer. Police in Southington are investigating the death of a hiker who fell from Ragged Mountain today. The victim, whose name has not yet been released, was dead when rescue workers got to the scene. This is the second time in two years that someone has died while hiking through that rough terrain. Police in Madison are investigating an apparent murder-suicide. The victims, identified as Rick and Sandy Lind, were found inside their home by their adult son. Police say it appears Mr. Lind shot his wife to death and then took his own life, putting his head into a noose and then shooting himself in the head. Neighbors say he had recently lost his job. It's a shame. I can't believe something like this happened here. While the Lynns were still living together, court records show they had been going through a divorce. A New Haven man has been charged with murdering his wife. Police say the, they found the body of 44-year-old Theodora Panaroni inside the couple's apartment on Dwight Street last evening. And detectives arrested her husband, Anthony, who's also 44. But they won't say how the woman died or comment on a possible motive. One of Connecticut's most popular tourist attractions apparently was an accident waiting to happen. The route taken by the Essex steam train has been modified after officials there discovered that three bridges on the route are crumbling and could collapse under the weight of a train. It will cost $300,000 to repair those bridges. The new Clinton Crossing Outlet Mall has been hit by thieves. 
Police say thousands of dollars in merchandise was taken from three different stores during its grand opening last weekend. $4,000 worth of shirts and 30 pairs of shoes were taken. The federal government is investigating possible sabotage at the Navy sub-base in Groton. Some wires near a nuclear reactor on board the USS San Juan were severed back in June. I can't really imagine a submarine sailor doing, you know, any kind of harm to the ship where he's sailing on that ship and if it's the environment uh, that is going to keep his life safe. The damage on the San Juan was quickly repaired and never posed any danger because the reactor was shut down. The sub is now back out at sea. The Naval Criminal Investigative Service is trying to find out what happened. Here at Channel 3, every time we play one of four million copyrighted songs, we have to pay a fee to a group called ASCAP, which represents the singers and writers and so forth. It's very common practice with all companies. But now ASCAP is demanding money from Girl Scouts who sing songs at camp, including the Macarena, even God Bless America. 